Hi, I'm going to abuse you domestically. Like Chris Brown the rapper. I didn't, this is I didn't all mean just it. me, and that's something you really need to fucking fix. I'm gonna fucking bash your fucking head against the wall with a brick if you don't shut the fuck up. Well, I guess you could say that aged terribly. Hello, ladies, gentlemen, and everybody in between that, and welcome on into the video. Today, we're gonna be talking about two horrible things. One of them being domestic abuse, a horrible, terrible situation that no, is never justifiable. I don't think there is a justifiable way to say I beat my wife. That just doesn't work. But the other sin being arguably one of the worst I've ever discussed on this channel, and that is the British. Okay, that's that's not good. <laughs> but jokes aside, this situation is horrible, and I almost didn't talk about it because of how horrible it is, because it's really hard to giggle and joke about this. But I wanted to talk about it regardless, because honestly, it kind of wraps itself all the way around, has a bit of a horseshoe effect, because it's about I'm Alex, who is a bit of a living joke in himself. So let's dig into it, let's talk about it, and it all starts with this guy's channel, who I used to watch. I, admittedly, probably like five years ago, I used to watch this guy, because I was like, he's funny, he sounds interesting, what's that accent? That sounds not normal. And then yesterday, on Twitter, as I was perusing the site as I do, I saw a post from not sen from Sensitive Society that says, After years of hating I'm Alex, I'm glad I finally have a good excuse to hate him with this image that is horrifying. That sound, it looks like something you'd see from Bigfoot Discovered footage. Like he's sprinting at you, except it's a shirtless twink. But then I saw a post coming from a girl named Alice. And this is where the fuse was lit to create the situation that we've been dealing with now. And this is a statement that released on a situation she's been scared to speak up on. It said, It's best that I was made public how horrible this person with the platform is, I'd hate to see any other woman go through this. Please read the statement before continuing. And we are gonna dig through a little bit of that. This statement is pretty rough. It's about a girl who's dealt with assault in multiple different ways from a terrible partner for quite a long time. And we're gonna dig into this video because I want more people to know about this. Even though I know that other commentary creators have, I'm a bad bitch and I'm gonna do it as well. So I'm actually going to straight up read some of the things that Alice wrote in her document just so it all makes sense. And then we're gonna dig through the text as well as the videos that have come out about I'm Alex because he said some awful things. This has been horrible. But let's start with the intro where essentially I'm gonna summarize this because it is a whole page. The first paragraph talks about the fact that she wanted to come out about this with Alex for a long time, but he's scared because he's had essentially like a plan he has a contingency like he's iron man or something or batman he's been saying that if she comes out with a story he come out with a contradicting story to discredit her and essentially kind of leaning on the fact that if he's a big creator people will just believe him which is fucking bonkers considering the amount of creators that have been outed for horrible things this year. That's a bit rough for you, Alex, I'm not gonna lie. And then the other half is essentially her just talking about her initially meeting Alex, saying that they met on March 17th, 2023, and in the beginning, they essentially just were love bombing each other, giving each other so much attention, giving each other so much love, but eventually, you know, in the beginning of a relationship, that's nice and all, you're in love and all, but eventually you have to get back to your normal life and work, and with her trying to go back to work, as I... Don't know what she does, but she works from home. She doesn't specify what yet in this document. Uh, he started to essentially just get enraged with her. And this is then followed up by a... <laughs> I'm not gonna... I'm, I shit you not. This document is 82 pages long. And it's a bunch of screenshots from texts that they've had and conversations that they've had in the past. And I'm gonna be breaking down some of the text screenshots that I think are some of the most violent and vicious ones after we get through some of the writing that she's put in the document. Because I feel like what she's written is kind of the most important thing. The thing we should probably open things up with. So I'm going to dig into the next thing she says, which is about how they scream in calls and let's just give it a quick read. Disregarding everything I'd ever said, he would explain how it's always my fault and that I should apologize, that I should fix it and fight for him after he's made it worse by completely dehumanizing and degrading me. I would get breakup threats because I interact with my followers tweets, but which I would then apologize for after he made it very clear that he was upset, but demands for more from me. This would be followed by him continuing to call me a bitch and threatening. I'm going to go refollow everyone I unfollowed for you. If you're going to be like that, holy shit, that's petty as fuck. And it only gets worse because of what he says next or what she says next about it which by the way i found later that he was still interacting with many of the people he had old relations with and found him stalking his ex with old nudes on his phone oh my god pick a struggle alex you're not only a horrible person on the outside but you're hiding shit as well that's crazy <laughs> it's not like a villain with an alter ego there's just two evil alter egos working against each other here and of course when you're in a relationship with a goddamn gorilla you tend to not exactly have the greatest mental health and so alice talks 
talks about how she's been dealing with depression, and in the document, she even explicitly says that if she ever sounds sad around Alex, she has to try and act happy, or he has a fit. Like a goddamn three-year-old, which is crazy! I I'm gonna say this is crazy like 18 times in this video, but regardless, it's because this situation is genuinely insane. And as you go on your journey down this 82-page document, it only gets progressively worse, with certain things like how she wrote that she had a dream to expand onto other platforms, and he told her to shut up and also to kill herself, which is nice and sounds extremely good uh, as a thing to say to your partner. He also has called her the N-word? Pick a struggle, you're racist too? To be fair, he's- He's British. I feel like that's kind of part of their genetics. That was sarcasm, by the way. I'm not trying to justify racism in any capacity. It's bad, guys. Racism? Don't do that. And I think th one of the things that baffles me, aside from the obvious racism, that's so cool and awesome, is how he does things that are just rude by default. Like, on top of being an abusive partner, he's a dog shit partner as well. Where's the quality? Where's the reason to be around this human being? There was one snippet where I saw he ended up canceling coming to see me on my birthday or forgot about it and went to see Star Wars with his friends instead of seeing me. Which is crazy because when did this happen? Did he not go to her birthday to watch the sequel Star Wars movies? That might be a crime punishable by death. I'm not going to lie. Those are horrible. But I'm getting distracted. <laughs> when I told him it was my birthday, he ended up going out after the movie to grab a gift and eventually came to my place at midnight. Nice. So you, you missed it, you dumbass. I spent the whole day waiting for him. He invalidates my feelings after I said I got upset about it. Tired, tried to justify it by hanging out properly before my birthday came. Okay, so... I, I didn't come on your birthday. It's okay. I saw you the day before your birthday. I, I saw you a few days ago. It's fine. That shouldn't be an issue. Dude, you're an abusive partner and you missed your birthday. Come on. <laughs> Get something right. Alice also lists off a few quotes, and these are splendid quotable quotes from Alex. Like, fuck our anniversary. I'll take someone else out next week. How? You look like the, the goddamn Gollum from Lord of the Rings. Uh, you're nothing without me. Hilarious. I don't want you lol. The lol is just painful. I'll put up with you. What? Please bury yourself in the fucking garden. I don't know how you would do that. Die, just die in a hole. That seems repetitive. And you're a dumb cunt. He seems like such a splendid guy to be around. And as if it couldn't get any possibly worse, they actually ended up eventually moving in with each other. Which is horrible and of course resulted in him screaming in her face. As well as the situation I read where he chased her. He ch he chased her? And she had to lock herself in the bathroom and he was banging on the door. I, I know there's a lot of people who are going to bring up some sort of fact. I I've seen people on Twitter say it already, where it's like, why did you stay with him? And to be honest, I can't fully explain the situation because I'm not a girl in an abusive si relationship. I'm a white guy living in the middle of America. But I understand that there is situations where it's either scary because leaving your partner could incur their wrath, their very mentally ill wrath, but also the whole idea that when you're living with someone, which they eventually got to because of some reason, Stockholm or uh, some other, uh, is you finding another living situation is extremely hard. So it's scary all around, as well as you breaking up with them would mean you have to explain it to other people, and then if they learn about it, then that person learns that you told other people about it, they might come for you. It's horrifying. It's terrifying. And of course, it only got worse from here. And let's honestly, if we're going for the bingo of crime, let's add destruction of property to the list. There's actually some images of uh, her monitor and her keyboard missing keys, but the monitor missing uh, the screen part. Uh, it was destroyed. Um, yeah, that's also a crime, I think. And of course, finishing up this summary of the 82-page document, they eventually ended up breaking up to, of course, him not wanting it and begging for her to stay, which is, that's great. That's so cool. Uh, remember when he said, uh, I can replace you and uh, I don't want to be with you and you should bury yourself in a garden? <laughs> Where did that go, Alex? And it ended with him sending her a heartfelt, wonderful letter. <laughs> he wrote a fucking, he wrote a fucking letter. Isn't that, is that Sharpie? Did he write this in Sharpie? What a depressing young lad. And of course, at the end of the document, Alice makes sure to add on the note that this is only the things that she wanted to talk about. There were still things that she felt like not even getting to the point of reliving, which leads us to believe that it gets worse, which is horrifying. But of course, that's only what was written down. There was other things included in the Google document, with some of them being videos. There were some videos of the way that Alex treated her in Discord calls. And let's just do a little bit of a watch together really quickly. Sorry first. I'm a fucking whore mouth bitch retard cunt. Is it generally because you're just fucking brain dead? Yeah, I'm very brain dead, yeah. Is that why you decided to go on the fucking offensive instead of the, the uh, maybe? Offensive. Okay. He seems to I don't know. Good. I don't know what to call what you did. It was weird. It's always weird. You always take the fucking weird route. Just do the normal route, which is 
Just do the normal route, but a normal girlfriend yeah, would do. Yeah, acting like oh, this I didn't, is I didn't all just it. me, and that's something you really need to fucking fix. I'm gonna fucking bash your fucking head against the wall with a brick if you don't shut the fuck up. You Ooh! Getting spicy, are we? Uh, that sounds normal. It seems like- oh, I like the text that he sent. I hate you genuinely, because then, now, you come over on her- Come- you come- uh, someone trying to fix it, and you push the knife in. It's fucking weird, I hate you for real, I do not like you. And then he called her. <laughs> What a strange and abusive young guy. Um, yeah, and he tells her to bash- she's gonna bash her head in with a brick. Threatens- threats of violence is cool. It seems like he gets mad whenever she speaks. It-, it I don't know necessarily what is wrong with him. I don't think there's anything that- like, I'm not gonna try and diagnose him with something. I think he's just a bad person. And it only gets worse if you continue watching some of these clips. But this next thing about one, you. This one, I think, is the- the one that made my jaw hit the floor like a cartoon character. And this is the thing. This is why I fucking go round around in circles. I joined cool. And when I'm getting, you're talking to me, going, this is the thing, even though, now, now, when it's too fucking late, you admit that you did everything fucking wrong, but when it actually matters, when you should lay down, like a good fucking dog, you <laughs> When you should lay down like a good fucking dog? This guy's psychotic! Don't fucking do it, you fight, for some reason, I don't know why you fight, because you're losing, because you end up admitting that you fucked it all up anyway, so it's just fucking weird. And I know that you're going to end up admitting that you fucked it all up. It's so funny that he talks about how she admits that she fucks it all up and that she always and loses the fight, <laughs> loses the fight in a relationship, loses at the very end. And I think that's funny because it's definitely a situation where he's just extremely psychotic and mentally ill. And so he continues to berate her and be rude to her and attack her until eventually all she can do is say, my bad, I messed up. Because what else do you do? It's not like he's going to admit his fault. That's clearly what's going on here. That's just my theory. Call me MatPat. But um, yeah, this guy's a freak. Let's continue, though. There were four. There's two other clips I like, saw. Like massive issues there. And you think you can you think you can just fucking ignore them because like well, what's the worst that can happen? Um, I don't know. Uh, your boyfriend's a fucking famous internet celebrity and doesn't trust these people. <laughs> He's a famous internet celebrity. Yeah, he definitely is. He seems famous. Because he has to keep his circle small. Because you might not have anything to fucking lose, because your life might be down the fucking drain, but I still have quite a lot that I would like to fucking give. What a crazy thing to say to your partner, by the way. Uh you're making it incredibly fucking hard for me. Just like Lewis did. I fucking hate all of you. You guys are fucking like, like, I can't make any videos of Paul Breach. He, honestly, he sounds like a small child having a fit. Like, it gives off the vibe of a 13-year-old who got told by their mom that they need to get off Fortnite because they have to get up at 7 a.m. for school tomorrow. And, uh, it's, it's sad. It's kind of depressing. Let's continue those one more. What I think mental is, I think I may have said, like, a hundred times to the point where it's actually really hard to follow what I'm saying because it's so flexible. It is really hard to follow what he's saying because he seems like a fucking freakazoid i've gone you could do this but you might be able to do that but you might be able to do that and you might be able to do this and this might work but you might be able to do that and it's all it sounds fucking mental I, I don't even understand how you could possibly actually follow along to it i know like most of my friends struggle to actually understand what i'm saying yeah, no, I'm, I'm struggling to actually pick up anything from that clip. That was just confusing to listen to. Hi, Editor Evan here. I actually, while rewatching this, it kind of snapped. It kind of clicked in me what uh, he's actually saying here. Uh, he's saying he's a Rick and Morty fan, <laughs> is essentially what's going on here. He's like, uh, my friends don't understand me. You don't understand me. Every time I say something, people just don't get it. Uh, it's like I'm, I'm kind of crazy or something. It's because you are... Anyway, let's continue. And of course, below those four clips on Discord is a multi-clip tirade where he's just screaming at her for not being what he wants and how her face is irritating to look at. He calls her the N-word with the hard R in the video as well. But I don't want to sit here and watch a six-minute video of just I'm Alex going on a tirade because his videos are already painful enough to watch. And so I want to move on to screenshots of the text that I've seen because these are absurd. We have beautiful ones like the emotional level of a fucking brick. Just say yes, you dumb um, woman. Uh, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up, thumbs up. You're thick. And it says, you're, ba you're a bad BF calling me a bitch and insulting me and every time you get slightly upset. By the way, bars from Alice? Bars? You're truthing? That, like, <laughs> this is the truest thing I've seen in this entire video. There's also more saying, block me. You definitely were giving me a shitty attitude. Yeah, I won't unblock you, though, because talking to you is like talking to a brick. Maybe don't be dumb. <laughs> That's, that would be, like, so much cooler. That's so crazy that he says these things to her and then pisses and shits himself when she blocks him. Like, this video I saw where he... <laughs> <laughs> let's honestly let me get my voice acting skills out let's give this a quick read alice please unblock me i'm crying so much this is awful can i say goodbye you mean so much to me oh really that's crazy um 
I have to say goodbye. I can't imagine not saying goodbye. I didn't when you elf T because I oh left because I thought we'd fix it. But and now I won't even have a chance. I didn't even voice. I did it. I didn't as a voice note. What are you saying? If we can't even claw. <laughs> This guy is illiterate. Fuck, please, anything. If you could see me, you'd know I'm not fucking around. Yours round. I'm not lying. I'm just broken. And then a few hours later, Alice. A few hours later, or thir 30 minutes later. Please don't end it like this. 10 minutes later. Hey, I sent you a message on Facebook. Message son Facebook. You haven't opened them. I don't know if that's intentional or not. But I don't want to have to bump you on other socials, etc. Then it's just Facebook. Hello? Can you see this? If so, reply. Unblock me on Facebook. Then let's talk about- uh, I can't actually. This is begging. This is crazy. He needs- He- He is slobbering all over it. This is depressing. This is sad. Because not only is he an abusive partner, but he's also, like, <laughs> refusing to let her go. This is- He's just- He's completely irrational and insane. I don't get- There's, and like, 17 other similes for that. So, at this point- this is everything that Alice had said. We have destruction of property, domestic abuse in many different skills, both online, mentally, and to a certain extent, physically. We have racism and usage of slurs, and we have, of course, being British. And so, that's about it, right? He's an abusive partner, they're no longer together, and now Alex is being exposed online for this. Um, uh, what's that? What? Oh. Oh, oh, there- a second allegation has hit the towers? Oh no! Alex had a second allegation drop! There was another document that dropped from a girl named Annie, with my experience with I'm Alex. And of course, she alludes back to Alice's text as well, but this is something that actually happened before Alice. We have a prequel trilogy that just dropped because Annie dropped the document talking about her relationship with Alex between 2017 and 2018, in which she drops this document. It's just a big, long doc. It's not as long as Alice's, but essentially it explains how they were in a relationship and they never really spent much time away from each other. They spent first six months in the U UK and then eventually spent six months in the United States. Staying together the entire time with only splitting in the middle for Alex to go back to the UK temporarily for his visa because there was visa restrictions. He can only stay for like three months or whatever. And eventually what happened was after about six months of being in America, he had to go back home to the UK because his visa runs out after six months. I don't know visa laws or how that all works, but apparently they had to stop being physically together for quite a long time. And during that time, she was made aware by a bunch of her friends that she was in an abusive relationship, and in the document, if you read through some of the things, they're very similar to things we heard from Alex. Or Alice, not Alex. Alex didn't say a thing. He actually has yet to respond to any of this. He said, uh, he would, most of the time when I had problems, he'd always somehow make a, find a way to make it about himself, or talk about his own issues. He gets stressed over his YouTube channel and complain about uploading, which I do as well, but he doesn't come to, the, I don't come to this point where yelling, I can't catch a fucking break, breaking things. He talks about, he threatening to end his own life over minor conflicts. <laughs> Oh my god. We also have instances of him trying to spin the narrative and twist words, and one of the craziest things, the most insane thing, was the Slazo situation. Slazo, Slazo, I don't know who this is, but I know that a long time ago, I'm Alex kind of spearheaded a brigade against Slazo for being a bad partner to their part, their girlfriend, I believe, at the time, and Alex was spinning it as a situation of sexual assault. And apparently, from reading this document, there was no sexual assault. To my knowledge. And this is actually something that Alex spun in a way to make it more dramatic than it had to be. Which is crazy! False sexual assault allegations? Add it to the list! This guy's insane! And at the very end of this relatively shorter document, Annie brings up that Alex did put his hands on her. He actually, there was a time where they were recording a video and he kept having to do the same take over and over again and was raging, which I relate to, I have to do the same thing quite often. But he got to the point where he was slamming on his desk, broke his microphone, you dumb bitch, that's money! And then when Annie tried to escape the situation and just walk away, like, I don't want to be near a guy who's having a rage fit like a goddamn gorilla, this is the third time I've referred to him as an, an orangutan, but he's acting like one, he grabbed her arm. Holy shit, aggressively. Like, don't you leave! No, I'm, I'm gone, bye! Annie then finishes the doc essentially just being empathetic towards Alice, saying, It saddens me that this come, all this come this far. I wish Alice the best privately, and it breaks my heart to have seen the things she had gone through. And I honestly think this is absurd. These are, of course, at the moment, allegations, but there is so much overwhelming evidence. There's, there's a, he turned on his camera. He turned on his camera in a voice call, being an abusive boyfriend. Like, just sign the paper on your your jail sentence at this point. Like, you're a moron, Alex. Why did you why did he turn on his camera? That was a high quality camera. He had to go in, turn it on, prep the settings, plug it in, 
to yell at his girlfriend? What are you, a professional domestic abuser? And since all of the shit has hit the fan, there have been various content creators who've come forward and been like, oh, uh, guys, domestic abuse is bad. Thanks, I wasn't aware. Most of them being friends with I'm Alex, saying, like, I didn't know better. Some of them being things like Will E, who said, like, firstly, I really hope Alex is doing well and commend her massively for having the courage to get that out there. Saying things like, I, I hadn't really known anything about this. Uh, the severity of the abuse that Alice had published was far worse than anything I'd heard being discussed. Which, by the way, far worse than you've heard, which means you've known about the abuse, but we'll get to that. There was also other people that have come forward. I saw one from Mia. I don't know who Mia is, but I've heard that she is the girlfriend of another content creator who's friends with Alex. And she also was saying that I, when I found out Alex and I were signed to some talent agency, I immediately made them aware of his accusations and the put pressure on them to drop him, which they did. This was June, 2023, which also makes me wonder why no one knows about the uh, abuse aside from the talent agency. Um, Anyways, let's continue. We also have Mimulus, who's come forward, saying, I'm aware of Alex's situation. I would usually wait until both parties have said their side publicly before speaking about it, but I think the evidence here is overwhelming, which is true. Thank you, Mimulus. I spent this morning reading what Alice had written and going over the evidence she's provided, and no one should have to go through what she has. It's awful that it's and disturbing, and it seriously shocked me, and I'm still processing what's happened. He also followed up with another post saying, Alex and I lived together between 2018 and 2022, and they started dating in 2023, so I've only seen him in person two or three times since moving out. Saying, like, I didn't know. I wasn't aware. He was domestically abusive. <laughs> what? And, well, I think that it is good that these content creators are coming forward and being like, yeah, hey, hey Alex, um, don't beat your girlfriend. That's bad. I feel like it's weird that all of these people have come forward now, once it's all got, like, gone down, d instead of coming forward before when he was a horrible human being. I understand that there's a possibility he could have not been showing this. I, I no, Like, domestic abusers are notoriously two-faced. So he might just be a nice little angel in front of his buddies, and then a goddamn demon with Alice. But it feels weird, especially when he says that they were together between 2018 and 2022 when Annie was in the situation, and he was also a problem with her. So, I don't know. I can't make a statement because I'm not British, so I'm not over there, and also I'm not a part of the situation at all, but it feels weird that they're waiting till now to say something when it seems like some of them might have been aware of it beforehand. That being said, with backlash in mind, there is another person receiving backlash, and that is the second person who came out with accusations, Annie. I was looking in the comments of this post, and I saw something like from Nicholas who was saying, innocent people don't stay silent for this long, which is a horrible comment, but then I realized it's not a comment at all. I actually saw that this was him quoting Annie about how someone was coming forward with accusations and they were saying innocent people don't stay silent for this long. So it seems like Annie was being a denier of a victim previously, which is not good. But at the same time, I'm not here to go and attack Annie. We know that Alex is a bad person. We even have seen evidence of it in multiple different forms. So it doesn't really matter. I, I don't care if Annie had been making a poor take in the past. I don't doubt that Alex could have been a bad person to her in the past as well. And of course, with that in mind, uh, I'm going to be getting out of here. I appreciate you guys spending some time with me, and of course I want to let you guys let me know how you feel about all this, because this is wild. I've never seen such a decisive and exact takedown with this much overwhelming evidence in a long time, so I'm glad I was able to explain it, and I hope this helped. I hope this made it make sense, and if I missed any details or messed anything up, please let me know in the comments down below. I threw this together. I was going through the document essentially while I was recording it, so I wanted it to all make sense with you guys, but um, if I missed anything, of course, tell me. Thank you guys for being here, though. Subscribe if you are new and like the video if you liked it. And of course, thank you for being here. And also, if you are someone who's dealing with abuse yourself or in a situation like this, don't be afraid to come forward. It is scary. It is horrifying. And an abusive partner is the devil. But coming forward is only going to bring good things for you. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being outstanding. And as always, adios, arrivederci, goodbye, good night. And um, yeah, rest in peace. I'm Alex. Your career is fried.